Hey guys, welcome to today's video. It's gonna be a little different style video. This was a special request from you guys. I got several requests on YouTube and also on my Snapchat to do a day in the life of what I eat type video because Brad's done this before on the channel. I have never done it and we do eat a little bit differently, especially right now that I happen to be like seven months pregnant. So of course what you see me eat today is not going to be like what I ate last year or how I've eaten for the last 10 years to stay in shape but it will it's somewhat similar it's not like a completely different it's just there are some things that are different so keep that in mind as you're watching this video and um, hopefully you enjoy seeing day in the life of my food Let's jump right into the video, shall we? Um, you can see I have wet hair right now because I've just got out of the shower, um, but and I didn't actually record what the first thing I ate for breakfast this morning because I usually roll out of bed and go to the kitchen immediately to eat. I just wake up starving. That's kind of the way my metabolism has always been. It's not just during pregnancy, but even more so during pregnancy, I think you know my metabolism is just on fire. So um, the first thing I always wanna eat is some kind of carbs. <laughs> this is not a high protein meal, it is a carb meal. And this is one of those things that may be just specific to my metabolism type. So this is not what I usually recommend for my private nutrition clients. Um, it's not what we recommend in general, but I'm being totally real with you, this is what I eat. So, um, Normally I would have some like oats like usually the first thing I would make in the morning is something like rolled oats And I always stick to this portion size. This is a one quarter cup measurement So you can see that's a pretty small amount. This is more of a snack really than it is a meal um, But you know, it still does count towards daily macros and everything like that So one thing I've been adding just because of pregnancy that's something I used to never do before is adding these dates. Um, dates are really good for pregnancy and people claim that they make your labor shorter and easier. So I'm all about that. I have been adding about two, sometimes three, usually two dates to my morning oats or cereal. One thing, talking about cereal, one thing I've been doing differently with pregnancy that I never used to eat before, but I just have, this is like one of my pregnancy cravings, is grape nuts. <laughs> and this is just a generic brand. It's called Nutty Nuggets like store brand of grape nut cereal. So I don't know if you guys have had this. It's obviously like not that delicious. I don't know why I like this right now. It's has the texture of gravel basically, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that I've been craving during my pregnancy. So I've gone through a few boxes of this stuff right now. It's empty because I had the last quarter cup serving of that today. A serving of this is actually half a cup, but I had a quarter cup because that's all I feel like I need in the mornings. And then I also sometimes throw in some fresh fruit, like today I had raspberries. So about five or six raspberries, not a lot, and two dates, like I said. And then for the milk, I don't do dairy milk, so we always have some kind of alternative milk. And this morning it was this coconut beverage from Trader Joe's. A lot of times almond milk or cashew milk. Um, sometimes I make homemade almond milk, but not very often. Usually we buy it, it's easier. Um, what else? I also have my prenatal vitamins. These are the ones I'm taking. I've shown them on my mommy vlogs before. It's like a raw prenatal vitamin. I also pop a vitamin D and I'll mix this vitamin C. I mix it with my lemon water. So I stir it into there and that is how I get my vitamins. So like I said, I already had this breakfast earlier today. I just wanted to show you because it was at six o'clock in the morning and I wasn't ready to film yet. So um, now that I'm showered and everything, good to go. I've been working for the last few hours, but usually like it's almost nine o'clock right now, usually around 9, 10, we have our actual breakfast. So I'll show you that pretty soon. Two more things, I almost forgot. I always have like some cinnamon with that morning oatmeal or cereal. And I always have some sort of like coffee-ish beverage. This is not actual coffee. A lot of times I use this Roma, which is like a grain beverage. It tastes like coffee. And this one is a decaf coffee. During pregnancy, it's just a good time to cut back on your caffeine. So some mornings I'll also have like a green tea or something instead. Um, I've been trying not to have too much caffeine, but I am a fan of coffee. I really love coffee, so that's how I've still been enjoying the taste of coffee without giving caffeine to the bump. 
All right, so it's about 10, 15 in the morning now. I'm about to put together actual breakfast. And this is the type of breakfast I show you guys like on the last video that was about this, we call it the PFF breakfast. So go and watch my last video from last week if you wanna hear more details about that. But I'm gonna show you exactly how I put it together right now. So I always talk about using some kind of like leftover meat and that's what this is, this like slow cooker pot roast that we made last night. We had it for dinner last night, it was super delicious. And that's kind of our secret to getting our protein in with breakfast is making it the night before because it does, it took all day to cook this. So I'm not gonna cook this in the morning. So we always cook it at night and then you use the cold leftovers to go into this breakfast. Um, some other things in this breakfast, veggies like kale and this is some shredded cabbage. You can buy these things, they're already chopped, washed, uh, ready to go. So you just literally grab and put into your frying pan this is what makes it doable to get that kind of fiber in the morning. I'm also adding um, some of this butternut squash. I got this from Trader Joe's yesterday. It's awesome. It's like crinkle cut fry shapes, but it's butternut squash. So that adds a little bit of carbs to the meal. I'm gonna use some of these leftover hard boiled eggs also for more protein and more fat. Um, I'll use about two of those and some coconut oil. I use like about a tablespoon of coconut oil for cooking and that's it. I'll spice it up with some herbs, salt and pepper, um, but it just makes a really yummy stir fry. I'll show you when I'm done. I also love some sort of like fruit with breakfast, so I always include some sort of sweet as the carb source. During pregnancy, it's been oranges. I'm absolutely obsessed with oranges and I feel like I need to eat one every single day with this pregnancy, which is a good thing. Extra vitamin C. Um, so I'll have like one medium sized orange like this cut into smiley wedges while the food is cooking. This is like my little appetizer. Here's everything going together. I cook the veggies separately. I'll add the meat at the last minute just to warm it up. And then when I'm having hard boiled eggs, I just have them cold separately. Um, a lot of times I'll cook over easy eggs or just scramble eggs into this mixture. So that's kind of how this breakfast comes together and the coconut oil is underneath these veggies just helping them cook and get all delicious. So that's breakfast on a plate, basically what it looks like, the finished product. I use about four to five ounces of the meat and just stir fry it together with those veggies. Eggs on the side, this is the rest of my orange. And that's it, it's pretty simple. Like it seems complicated I think if you haven't been used to this type of breakfast, but really it takes one frying pan and one plate. It's not a lot of dirty dishes, it's not that big of a production and it's really delicious and the macros are really good, so. That's what I have for breakfast around this time. And after this meal, we'll be to the gym. So this is typically like the pre-workout meal. So we're just leaving our workout, the Mecca. So I didn't show any clips of the workout today, but I just wanted you to know that we had a really good weightlifting session. Yeah, and I'm so buff now. So sometimes um, I tend to eat less. On days I don't work out, but workout days, gotta have a post-workout shake. So I'm gonna go home and blend that up and I'll show you what's in it. Mine's in my car because I'm prepared. Brad packs ahead. I usually like to have mine freshly blended. All right, so we're back from the gym. I got about a cup of water. That goes first. I have some frozen mango right here and it's not a lot. It's like I'm putting a little bit of that, but then I also am adding a whole banana. This is a fresh banana just because we're out of frozen bananas, but that's what I usually would put. Frozen banana makes it really frosty and creamy. And this is the protein powder I'm using, very bright there. Um, this is just one I picked up at Whole Foods. It's a grass-fed whey protein. So you guys know we recommend like a whey isolate from grass-fed cows if possible is awesomeness. And also flavor or sweetened with stevia because you don't want artificial sweeteners and you definitely don't want sugar. So that's what I use. And I'm just using one scoop. Like sometimes if I'm really intensely training, I'll up it to two scoops, try to get closer to 40 grams of protein. But as I'm pregnant and while trying to get super gains, I'm just keeping it reasonable. That gives about 20 grams of protein, which is like plenty for my current situation. So you're gonna put the lid on. That's it, and put it in my frosty cold glass. I keep these cups in the freezer to keep them extra cold because it's really good for smoothies. A little bit more in the blender. Mmm, that's good. So, 
pretty much that's the basics of the post-workout shake. We change up the types of fruit. Sometimes add like some maple syrup for more carbs or sometimes add more protein powder, like I said. But, um, and we have lots of different recipes for this on our site, Team Lovelin. But that's the basic post-workout shake and lunch is soon to follow, about like an hour from now. Cheers to gains, especially the baby gains. All right, it is now time for lunch. We've just had about an hour or two of work time, but we hungry. So I'm putting together our classic big ass salad. And here's what's in it. We've got spinach and arugula as the lettuce mixture. We've got about four ounces of leftover chicken that was also made in this slow cooker. I actually measured it out to be exactly four ounces, but you probably can't tell because it's stirred all in now. And then we have cherry tomatoes and sauerkraut and some sugar snap peas, these things for crunch. And then um, what else is in there? Oh, I already put a quarter cup of pecans and one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of vinegar. So that's what's in my salad. I also made Brad's over here. He's gonna have the rest of that slow cooker beef for lunch because he had chicken for breakfast. So we just kind of switch it up back and forth like that. That's how we kind of have the same meals almost the same meal, not the same, but similar meals every day. But we change up the protein sources, change up the vegetables, and change up the flavors by using different herbs, seasonings, and whatnot. So that's what we try to teach you guys. And hopefully you will enjoy that so much that you won't get bored of eating healthy foods all the time. That's what keeps this interesting and doable 365 days a year. And there are a few days a year that we don't eat healthy, but you know, most of the time, healthy food like you see me eating today. But there's one more thing I actually have in the oven. We almost always have like some sweet potato or something to go along with this, like a carb source, especially for post-workout. Um, today we were out of sweet potato, but I did have those crinkle cut um, butternut squash, kind of french fry type thingies. So we're making those instead of sweet potato. They're looking really good. Um, these are quite a bit lower in carbs than sweet potatoes are, and they're pretty low in calories too, which is a great thing if you're really trying to keep your carbs down or if you're on a weight loss um, strategy right now, you would probably love these butternut squash fries that I got from Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna put those on top of the salad once they're done cooking, and then it's time to eat. And that is the post-workout meal. Look yummy. Look yummy, you want a bite? And the bevy I'm having with lunch so is sweet a potato crinkle fry. Fail. What? Fail. <sighs> oh, fail. Snapchat fails. <laughs> oh, Bruno just ate it. <laughs> Bruno. <laughs> I wanted to let you guys know that I'm having this um, sparkling water, basically. It's um, flavored with watermelon, but it is a zero calorie, no or 15 calorie, no sugar added beverage. And the ingredients are just sparkling water, fresh squeezed watermelon juice, and citric acid. That's it. So pretty clean beverage to have the, to add some flavor and like texture. I love the bubbles without you know, break in the bank. So I just got back from an hour long walk with the dog. I'm having a little snack now. So I have here one whole, I think it's a Fuji apple. Pretty sure it's a Fuji. And that's cut into slices. And I'm having that with one tablespoon of almond butter from Trader Joe's. Very good. So very simple little snack, enough to hold me over before dinner. We'll probably have dinner in like an hour or two hours. So this is my in-between snack. It's about that time for dinner. It's now, I think, 8 o'clock, almost 8 o'clock. And Boo's cooking for me. How nice. Let's see what we're having. We're having burritos. We got some Ezekiel tortillas over here. And then made up this delicious mix of, what is that, babe? Ground beef? Ground beef, yeah, kale, ground beef, kale, cabbage, and tomato. That's it, right? Some spices and stuff. Do it right Some up in here in the living kitchen. Yeah. And did you use coconut oil on that? Of course. Yeah. Maybe we'll put some avocado with it too. I need to fill up my calories. For our bevy to go with dinner, we are having some decaffeinated tea. So I'm boiling some water. I'm gonna make this uh, decaf green tea for Brad, and then for me, I'll be going with the pregnancy tea. And here is my burrito. Bruno's a little jelly. 
Um, I would say this is like, yeah, maybe three to four ounces of meat rolled up in here like that and just tucked into a little tortilla and that's what I'm having for dinner. How's it taste? Awesome. You like that? So we're going to sit here at the counter, talk about our feelings and drink tea. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me for a day in the life of what I eat. What do you even call this video? A full day of eating video. I think that's what it's called. That's what the cool kids call it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. This is a pretty typical day of eating for me. So like I said, not that different from what I would recommend for a client, but um, you know, everything depends on your goals. If you're looking to gain or lose, you know, your diet should really reflect your goals. So if you want more help on your diet, you can always contact me for some coaching because I do plans similar to this for clients. And uh, that's it. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye. How to take a totally boring meal plan and turn it into something delicious.